Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I'm going to be recommending romance books to you that have a vacation element to them. Baby, baby. So in all the romance books I'm going to be talking about today, the couple goes on a vacation together or they meet on a vacation, I'm pretty sure so. This time of the year is filled with families and people and couples going on vacation. Uh, the winter break is a hot commodity for that time because of Christmas and people out of school and all that jazz. So I thought this would be a great time to recommend vacation romances to you. I know in the US it is a winter time. Um, so some of these are winter vacations. I think only a very few, um, but most of them are sunny beach, typical stereotypical, what you would think of a vacation. These are all really fun. And I think a great way to enjoy your vacation is to read a romance that takes place during a vacation. So let's get into these recommendations. <laughs> I'm gonna get kind of like the popular ones out of the way, just in case you haven't read them yet. The first one is obviously The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. This one is an enemies to lovers romance. Our hero and heroine do not like each other very much, but their respective siblings are getting married to each other. So the heroine's sister is mar marrying, sorry, the hero's brother. And so they're the best man and the maid of honor in the wedding. While they're eating dinner after the ceremony, the hero and the heroine are the only people in the entire wedding party or wedding in general to not eat from the seafood buffet and everyone gets food poisoning besides them. So the heroine's sister tells her like, hey, go on vacation in my place um, and you can like disguise yourself as me or whatever, pretend to be me to get this vacation. This vacation was free, she won it and they're gonna be charged if no one shows up to the vacation that they want. So the heroine goes on the vacation, but so does the hero in this story. So um, they have to pretend to be married during this vacation and it's very funny and it gets very sweet at moments. Be aware though, there is a little bit of a miscommunication trope in here and this is a closed door romance, but I just thought this was a really fun read and a great spin on an enemies to lovers romance. I forgot to mention the vacation aspect of this book and that's the whole point of this video. I'm so sorry. These two go to Maui uh, together and they stay in this resort and there's only one bed in this room that they're in. You have a lot of scenes where the characters explore Maui and all that jazz. So I need to talk about these two books by Emily Henry. This is Beach Read and this is People We Meet on Vacation. There's vacation literally in the title. So January in here is going through a rough time. Her dad just passed and with his passing, revealed a lot of secrets he was keeping. One of them being an affair he had, his whole marriage basically, and him keeping a secret lake house in this very small town. And so she goes to the lake house to stay in the house to figure out what was going on and to write her novel. She's a writer, a romance writer, I believe. And her next door neighbor just so happens to be her college writing nemesis, Gus. And the two of them are bumped like into each other and have to spend time together but they both have like kind of like writer's block and so they're tasking each other to write from their genres he's more of a literary fiction mystery crime person does not have happy endings and she does with her romances so they task each other to kind of like weave elements of their genres into each other's stories there is this vacation-esque setting january is taking a vacation from her life and so is gus and so they're taking this beach not beach. It's not a beach read, which is so funny. This book does not take place on a beach and it's called beach read. It's a lake. <laughs> beach and a lake are not the same thing. <laughs> anyway, um, they're in this lake house. They're both in their lake houses and they are on vacation from life to kind of like dig deep into their novels. Who We Meet On Vacation is kind of like entirely different. Uh, we have Poppy and Alex and they met in college and became fast friends. And ever since they met in college, they've been going on vacations every single year together to spend time with each other. But this book takes place in two different timelines. You have the time period where they first became friends and were really close. And then it flips to present time where they're not friends at all. They haven't spoken in quite a long time. So you're trying to figure out throughout the book why they are not speaking anymore. But in present time, they haven't seen each other or gone on vacation in a while. And Poppy just says, what the heck, let me call him up. I really want to go on one last vacation with him. And she does just that. She calls him up and is like, hey, would you want to go on this vacation with me? I can't remember where they go specifically in this book. They, they The book takes place throughout the years where they go on many vacations together. Um, but this one, the one in the present chapters, it's so funny. I don't remember where they're going. I think it's a wedding, 
if I'm not mistaken. They have a traumatizing experience with the room, with the person they're renting the room from. Like they have to share a bed together in a room where the AC is broken and the windows are shattered. Like it's a whole deal. I really did enjoy this Friends to Lovers though. And um, I know that this one is a fan favorite amongst Emily Henry readers. I also have to mention two books by Chloe Lisa. This is the third and fourth book in her Bergman Brothers series. Ever After Always is definitely more vacation-y than the fourth one here. This is about Aiden and Freya and this is a marriage in trouble romance. Aiden has been spending a lot of time at work and having a lot of anxiety about their future. They want to have a child, Freya and him want to have kids, and he grew up without a lot of money, um, with not the best home life, you know, not the best family life. They weren't in the best financial situation. Aiden was not growing up. And so he really wants to provide for his future kids and his wife, and he spends a lot of time in the office and doesn't really dedicate that much time to his wife, who he loves very much. Um, but he's having a lot, a lot, a lot of anxiety. I really related to him with that. And Freya has decided that she's had enough. She feels like she is being forgotten by Aiden. And so she tells him one day, you need to leave. I don't feel like you're being a good husband and I'm sick of it and it breaks my heart. Aiden gets kicked out of the house and this whole book is about him trying to woo Freya again and kind of get back into her life. There is a large chunk of this book that does play, take place during a vacation. Freya's parents, um, the Bergman parents <laughs> um i believe it's their anniversary and all their kids chip in to take everybody on a vacation to a tropical island and that setting is kind of where aiden and freya kind of reconnect again and there's also just a lot of hijinks and hilarity that happens on this island um because this is a bargman brother book i really enjoyed this marriage and trouble romance aiden is a sweetie who just wants to love and care for his family and freya is so freaking strong I love her. Then we have book four, which is With You Forever, which isn't your typical sense of a vacation romance. This is the romance between Axel and Rooney in the previous books in the series. You've seen them kind of like looking at each other longingly and pining over each other. And so we were very excited to finally get their romance. I believe Rooney in here is a lawyer, if I'm not mistaken, or studying to become a lawyer. And she is dealing with a lot of health issues. She has ulcerative colitis, which is a chronic illness. And she's really struggling and she needs a break from her life. And so she decides to take a little mini vacation. She goes to the Bergman cabin. The Bergman cabin gets offered to her like, hey, you can go stay in the Bergman cabin um, to take a little bit of a vacation. So she does just that, but she doesn't know that the cabin is under construction. Axel here is one of the Bergman brothers and he is very grumpy and very stoic and doesn't like to, like, he loves to help people secretly. He doesn't like taking credit for things, if that makes sense. He doesn't want to be the center of attention in that way. And so he's been secretly renovating their family cabin because it is falling apart, but he owns a cabin very close by. And when he realizes Rooney is here for X, Y, and Z reasons, he's like, okay, how about you just stay in my cabin with me while I work on the family cabin. And so this is definitely a forced proximity romance. They're stuck in this cabin together. And there's also a marriage of convenience aspect in here, which was just golden. I loved it. And so I love these two so much. This is my, I don't know. This is one of my favorite books in the series for sure. I just love Axel and Rooney so much. Axel can get it any day. <laughs> if you want a just short, hot, fun read, I have Forbidden Fling by Kat Taylor, aka Katie Robert. This is very short, slice of life, little novella. This doesn't really end in an HEA. You just have like a fun, fun little read. Our heroine here goes on vacation with her boyfriend and they go to her boyfriend's dad's beach house. She knows that her boyfriend's dad is going to be there, but she doesn't know that her boyfriend invites all of his guy friends. And all they do all day is play video games and he ignores her the entire time they're on vacation. And she is sick of this. This has been happening a lot recently with her boyfriend and she is honestly just sick of him. She realizes she thinks that she's not getting enough attention from him and that he is not being a great boyfriend. Who steps into the wings? Our boyfriend's dad. <laughs> the two of them have some fun together. There's cheating in here. She does not break up with her boyfriend before she does some things with his dad. So be aware of that. But this was so fun and so hot and had like, it was, it's not something you take seriously, you know? <laughs> Next is my favorite souvenir by Vi Keeland and Penelope Ward. This one is interesting because from the cover, you would think that this is like a hot summery vacation romance. It is not. This takes place 
in winter time where it's snowing. I don't know why they chose this cover. Our heroine in here is not doing well, okay? <laughs> um, she gets left at the altar by her husband. Her husband or fiance leaves her at the altar and she is upset. I would be too. So she decides to go on the honeymoon alone because um, she paid some good money for that. So why not get a vacation out of it? While she's at the hotel that she's supposed to be staying at, all the rooms are full because there's a snowstorm coming. And then she sees a guy go up to the counter and um, pretend to be somebody who's checking in. Like he knows that a certain name is on the roster of people waiting to be checked in. And he looks at the list and pretends to be one of those people. And she jumps in and is like, hey, I'm his sister. I'm with him. I'm with him. And so then they have to pretend to be like siblings to get these rooms. Um, and that's how they're first introduced. And the rest goes from there. They are becoming friends and close and they go on some vacation little treks together in this, I believe they're in Aspen, if I'm not mistaken, or something, someplace snowy in the US. <laughs> but then things take a turn when they have to go to their own respective lives after this mini vacation. This was a really fun read, but don't let the cover fool you. This does not take place in a hot, sunny vacation <laughs> location. <laughs> Another snowy vacation is Frigid by Jennifer L. Armentrout, our hero and heroine in here. They have been pining after each other for years. They're in college. They decide to plan a vacation with their friend group um, to go to this cabin in a snowy area. I I don't know the specific locations, y'all. I just know what kind of location it is. It's a snowy location, okay? So the couple in this book are the first people to arrive to the cabin that they're all gonna stay in. And then everyone else can't make it because there's a giant snowstorm. The two characters get stuck in this cabin during a snowstorm and they reveal their feelings. I believe they all wanted to go skiing. So there's a skiing aspect in here, um, but it is mainly about the two of them getting stuck in this cabin and having a fun oddle time in this cabin together. <laughs> Gifting Me to His Best Friend by Katie Robert, another Katie Robert. This is an MMF romance. Um, So there is two guys, two guys and then one girl. These two are married. This guy is this dude's best friend. And all three of them go on vacation together to this snowy, wintry location um, during Christmas time. The couple here has always liked him, okay? Um, and he's always liked them. <laughs> and the hero on this side decides to gift his wife to his best friend for Christmas. And they have a grand old weekend together while snowed in in their Christmas cabin. This is such a fun read. If you have not read this book or the other books in this series, you need to. And the last one I want to mention is Misadventures of a City Girl by Meredith Wilde and uh, Shell Bliss. The heroine of this book has just finalized, I believe, her divorce. And she's like, you know what? I need a vacation. I need to reward myself from this divorce. She decides to take a vacation in the mountains. And she stays on this resort and decides to go on a hike to find the secret spring that people like to talk about on this resort or close to the resort. She goes on a little trek, on a little hike, and she finds a spring and decides to take a dip in it, um, but she didn't bring a swimsuit, so you know what she's wearing when she's taking this dip? Mm -mm, nothing. Um, and so uh, this guy walks up on her and is like, hey, uh, you're on my property. Oh, what you doing here? But then it starts to snow and they get stuck in a snowstorm. He brings her to his cabin and they have a grand old little weekend together. He's a very reclusive man in the woods, in the mountains. And she is very much a city girl. And when they start like developing feelings for each other, they realize like, oh, how are we gonna work out if we want to work out, you know? But a large chunk of this book does take place while the heroine is on vacation in these mountains. But anyways, there you have it. Those are some vacation romances. Please let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you have any recommendations for me, I would love to read a vacation romance this month. If you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me either a snow emoji or a sun emoji because I feel like either some of them were in a very sunny location or a very wintry location. Um, but yeah, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day.